Hey freaking flies, welcome back to another video on the channel. I'm Brandon, I'm a guy who flies. Thanks for joining me today. I am sitting down to talk about bidding and scheduling and my roster for next month. I've been trying to make my wallet fold all day. Cashing in my dreams, big payout. Underneath my money tree, big shit. One of the things I want to do or be more intentional about this year is going back to being more of like a learning resource for for new flight attendants as well as flight attendant hopefuls especially in the realm of scheduling and bidding a lot of people have reached out to me like oh i miss your videos where you talk about your schedule and learning from you and how to bid and things of that nature so i'm going to bring that back and be more intentional so each month instead of just sharing about my schedule i also will pass on a few notes for your noggin if you will before i get into my schedule because there's not a lot to talk about which is the primary basis of what i want to discuss today and that is actually the high and the low months of flying. It's no secret if you follow other flight attendant vloggers, I'm sure you've heard everyone say there's nothing on the board to pick up. There's nothing out there. The board is dry. Open time is non-existent. And that is because right now we're currently in what's considered a low season of flying. Let me preface by saying I am speaking generally to the airlines in the United States. That is where my experience is. Even though I fly for a European character, I'm still based in the United States. So I still see a lot of what I'm going to mention today. There's many factors that contribute to the low and high seasons of flying. The airline, the base, specific routes, there's regions, there's holidays, there's events, there's seasonal trends. So this is not specific for every flight attendant in the U.S. This will vary. Let's start off with the high months. These are the months that you will be busy. You will make money. You will have hours. The summer season is peak season in the aviation industry. So June, July, and August. Like many industries, the aviation industry follows the actual school system. So the school system kind of dictates a lot of what happens. So June, July, August, many people are taking vacations during the summer months. There's a lot of increased leisure travel. Lots of airlines make the bulk of their money in these three months, June, July, and August. It's, kids are out of school, families plan to take their vacations. You can go anywhere you wanna go, specifically those of us situated in the United States because at that those months, the Northern Hemisphere, we're experiencing summer. So it's hot everywhere. You go to Seattle, it's warm. You go to Boston, it's warm. You go to Texas, it's very hot. You go to Florida, Forget about it. Those summer months of June, July, and August are going to be the top of the peak season. Also included in the peak season or high month of flying is going to be December, holiday season. People travel for the holidays, and this includes Christmas, this includes New Year's. Some of Thanksgiving, but not as much as people travel for that time between Christmas and New Year's, especially when a lot of corporations give their employees maybe the week off. You all know a lot of schools are off for like a two, two and a half week time span. So there's a lot of leisure travel that also happens during that time. March and April, spring break. Most colleges and universities tend to have their spring break in March. Most public schools tend to have their spring break in April. People having time off leads to increased leisure travel, leads to more demand for the airline. So you'll see a lot of spring break traffic, which is why I meant certain regions and certain routes. So you don't see people flying to Montana <laughs> for spring break. They're going to go south. They're going to go to the sun and sand destinations. They're going to Cancun. They're going to Cabo. They're going to Jamaica. They're going to Puerto Rico. They're going to Dominican Republic. They're going to be traveling to the Caribbean, Miami, all of those places to escape the colder weather for a little bit of warmth. And then lastly, there are other regional events and other like festivals and things that will just spike up travel at certain periods of time that has nothing to do with the season. It's just something is happening at a specific time. For example, the Essence Festival happens every year in New Orleans in July. That's already a peak holiday season, but that is a massive, massive festival that draws a lot of traffic to New Orleans. Flip side of the high months is going to be the low months of flying, or what we would consider the off-peak season. Starting off with January and February, where we are right now. <laughs> Winter months here in the Northern Hemisphere, it's right after the holiday season. School has resumed back. Offices have reopened. People have to go back to work. Kids go have to go back to school. People just aren't. It's gray. It's raining. It's snowing. <laughs> people are still traveling, but there is nowhere near as much demand for like people being on the go. Less leisure travel. So travel demand tends to decrease, which is also why, helpful hint, January and February, 
the best months to non-rev travel because if you want to be able to potentially get a, a seat on a flight, now is the time to do it. Also, September and October are considered low months because it's following that heavy travel season. Kids have gone back to school. Travel demand tends to decrease as well. And it's like a brief period of time right before the holiday season starts to ramp up. And then there are shoulder seasons, late fall and like early spring where you also kind of have lower travel demand and that's just compared to what you see in peak summer and the holiday season. It really does ebb and flow. It's low in January and February. You might ramp up a bit for March and April. It might go down just a little bit in May, but then it's going to skyrocket June, July, and August. Then it's going to dip a little bit um September and October, ramp up a little bit in November, ramp up more in December, and then the cycle starts back over again. You also have to acknowledge that these trends in flying vary based on other factors like weather, economic condition, airline promotion, competition, and global events, i.e. pandemics. And then as I mentioned earlier, there are going to be certain routes and destinations that might never see the high and low. Additionally, certain routes and destinations may have their own high and low seasons that are influenced by other factors that are just kind of specific to that region. For example, I used to be based in Miami. Miami is a go-to destination, but what you'll learn about the tourism industry in Miami is that in the summer is actually the slowest period, and the winter is the busy season in Miami because a lot of snowbirds are escaping the north and they're flying to Miami during the winter months, so Miami is very busy in the winter, and then in the summertime, because it's warm everywhere, I mean, people are still coming to Miami in the summer, trust and believe, but they're often opting to go to so many other places as well. Because of this, you will notice that airlines will adjust their flight schedules, their capacity. You might see an airline might fly from city A to city B five times a day in the summer, and then in the wintertime, they're only flying there three times a day. Your base might see a loss in certain routes. You're like, wait a minute, we used to always fly from our base in here to there, and now it's not there. We don't have those flights anymore. You might see fluctuations in the reserve level. So in the summertime, it's more flying, which means you need more what? You need more reserves because more flying means more routes, means more lines, means more schedules, but you also need just as much more backup. So that's why you'll often see airlines ramp up their hiring and their onboarding of new staff members right before the summer season to help combat that. And then the winter time comes and it's less flying and everyone's kind of sitting around twiddling their thumbs like, yeah, what are we going to do? You also have to note this if you work specifically for a low-cost carrier versus working for like a legacy carrier, primarily because of the fact of business passengers versus leisure passengers. So a mainline legacy carrier, for example, they're going to have capacity and they're going to build their route structure to support flying business passengers that go to business meetings and things like that, as well as leisure passengers that are just flying to that destination just for fun. But pay attention spe specifically if you work for low-cost carriers who heavily rely on leisure demand. They're going to change their flying and their schedules to follow. Wherever the people want to fly is where we're going to fly. And so you will see routes shift and change and that can affect your schedule. So as flight attendants, you have to be prepared. In the summertime, if I'm really, really busy and I'm making a lot of money, maybe I should be saving some of that money because the winter time is going to come and either I want to travel or I'm not going to be working as much and I'm not going to be bringing home as much money and there aren't trips in open time to pick up and I don't have this jam-packed schedule and I was making, I was working 120 hours the last three months and now I can only get like 85. That's a few notes for your noggin. I talked longer than I wanted to talk but hopefully you took something away from that. If you have further questions about the high and low seasons of travel and how that affects flight attendant schedules, feel free to drop down below and let me know and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Now let's hop into uh, my actual schedule. So I think this is my first roster reveal of the year because I haven't had a roster to share. Let's just be honest. The low season, yeah, I'm in the low, low, low of the low season, meaning there are no flights, no flights. Brandon has not worked a commercial flight since the middle of December. I've only done charter. And would you all believe, I'm total tangent, but I was supposed to be on a charter right now 
I got offered the opportunity to do another charter to Thailand last week and I had to turn it down because I was going to Las Vegas for the Super Bowl and for one of my friends birthday so I could be on a charter, charter trip right now but I had pre-planned engagement I'm out here passing up the money but it's all good because I love my friends and we had a great time in Vegas that vlog is coming out soon <laughs> I'm back from Vegas at the, the point of recording but that vlog has not been released yet. But nonetheless, um, the month of March is coming up. We are actually about to go back to having some flying. So my hiatus, my vacation, whatever you want to call it, because it feels like 10 weeks of vacation, coming shortly to an end because I got a roster that looked very bleak, but it had a trip on it, y'all. <laughs> it had a trip on it, and I was like, oh my gosh, let's go. I did not ask for any specific days off in March. I do need specific days off because I'm going on a cruise with some of my friends, but I missed the deadline to request those days off, so I'll have to deal with that later. But since I didn't bid for anything for March, let's just go ahead and plop up the schedule that I was awarded. Boom. This one. So, yeah, you see most of the month is very much empty. It's a lot of reserve. Reserve, 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 reserve. And then at the very end of the month, I start a six-day trip. That's kind of cool because I absolutely adore that destination. That was the schedule that I was awarded. Y'all know I don't. I don't fool with that. So I've made a modification already. Boom. And I picked up this trip on the 21st. And I love this trip because it starts with a deadhead. So I just get to deadhead to the destination, lay over, and only have to work the flight back. So I love that for me, and now I am still like stalking the board every day, every so many hours. I'm like, let me just go up here and see if anybody's posted anything, because I'm looking for more flights to pick up. Because after the beginning of March, winter hiatus is going to be over and done, and I'm going to be ready to work. I'm going to be looking for some more trips to pick up. But for right now, y'all, we just have a three-day trip and a six-day trip. And my six-day trip is actually a carryover into August. I mean, August, Jesus. My six-day trip is actually a carryover into April. So I don't even get to see that pay with May. It's, I mean, with, what is going on? I don't even get to see that pay with March because it's a carryover. It starts in March, finishes in April. So I only get paid for the portion that is in the month. So yeah, I need to pick up like one, maybe two more trips in March if I can finagle something. That is that. It's a slow period of flying right now, but your boy is going back. If you made it this far in the video and you are happy to hear that I'm going back to commercial flying, give me a thumbs up. If you are sad that I'm going back to commercial and then there might not be any more charters for a while, give me a thumbs up for that as well. Or give me a hot and a cold emoji for the highs and the lows of the flying seasons in aviation. I'm Brandon, I'm a guy who flies, and I will see you all the next time. Lord,